Hey guys, welcome back to Heath's Custom Creations, and today we're going to do the first episode of Shop Talk. And by the way, all these boxes are empty. <laughs> welcome back to the channel, guys. So, I haven't posted a video in a long time, so I just wanted to upload one today and do this new series called Shop Talks. So I found it's been really difficult for me to make these videos because I work for a construction company in the summer, and I'm about to go back to school. So it's going to be really tough for me to keep making project videos and other things like that because it requires a lot of time and effort to make the project, number one, find ideas, and then edit them and produce them and all that fun stuff. So I'll still be making project videos every here and there, but don't expect them as much as they used to be. And I'm going to start trying to replace those with just simple videos like these, which I'm going to call Shop Talks, which just going to be about me talking about what's happened in the month or so, because that's how often I'm going to do them. So, today I'm going to talk about some new tools I got and what's been happening around here. So let's get into it. Okay guys, so first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to jump into some of the new tools that I got. So, <clears throat> one of the first things I got was I got another impact driver from DeWalt. Um, they had this one at Lowe's, it's just the old brushed DCF-885. Um, just really good all around impact driver, no speeds or anything. To give it to a comparison, this is the DCF-887, which is their kind of flagship model. but. Um, is one of the speeds. It's they're kind of the same weight, same exact, almost same exact thing. No speeds, brushless, non-brushless. Probably a little more powerful, but not too much. Um, so I got this for school. So when I go to school, I build the sets and other stuff, props and stuff for the theater department at school. So I just need to get another impact driver to uh, take to school with me. So I got that. <clears throat> Got it at Lowe's, came with the 3 amp hour pack, this is the old 3 amp hour pack. Impact driver, a bag, and a charger. And um, this was a little cheap bag that they give you. I'm probably not going to use this, I'm probably going to use my Tough System boxes, but I'll give you a charger, and then I also got another just bit set. It's actually one of the nicer ones, this is the Flex Torque. Let's see that if it will focus the flex tour big set. It's got basically everything I need. So I got that and then also I got a, got a little dust on from yesterday. Also got a cordless recip. Get that out of the way. I just got a DeWalt cordless recip. I was looking into the brushless models and the non-brushless models and also looked into flex volt. And what sold me on this one was the flex volt. I only have two flex volt batteries, and they're currently on my miter saw over there. And the flex volt batteries are just, they're great, but I don't always need all that power. And if I did, I have a corded recip saw. So I'd rather have more runtime with the plenty of DeWalt 20 volt batteries I have and just stick with those. And that's what this thing runs on. And Concerning the brushless model versus this model, the only thing that sold me on it was brushless model was 20 bucks more. But for this one, this one was 129 in the store. But they gave you um, they gave you a free 3 amp hour battery and a charger, which was a really sweet deal. These batteries are expensive, and you're getting it basically for free. That's the normal price of the saw if you were to buy it anywhere else but Home Depot. Acme Tools had the deal, Lowe's had the deal, I think, but um, they give, gave you a free 3 amp hour pack. Uh, this is the new style pack. Not a big fan of this new style pack. It does probably give you a bit more power, but all the old tools and belt clips aren't sized for this wider pack. So as you can see, this pack is much wider than the other one, like a finger's width almost. So, it always hits the belt clips. This belt clip, I bent slightly so it will snap on there. But, um, yeah, I'm just, 
I'd rather have the little less power and have this old 4 amp hour, 5 amp hour style size pack. And so, just because it's thicker and skinnier, I'm much more of a fan of that than it being wider and thinner. So, not complaining, just, just a simple little thing. The old one still has the battery gauge too, and so does this one, but, um, I like this reset saw. It's been perfectly good. Um, it's slightly different than the one that you get in a kit, but because um, the one in the kit doesn't have the adjustable shoe, this one probably has a tad bit more power. So that's some of the new Dewalt tools I got. Um, yeah, that's basically it. The um, reset saw has been really great, very powerful. Um, just nice to have a cordless reset for cutting PVC cutting some tree trunks and just other stuff like that so that is some of the tools I got I also got this for work I think that's pretty cool one of my one of the people that I work with told me about this and this is a hammer holder just the hammer holder I'd seen these before but I always like to have a hammer on me and at work even if you have a hammer in the back of the trailer or something um, it's not really accessible. You want to have it on you basically at all times if you're going to have it or it serves no purpose. So I got this little hammer hook. It's really nice. Clips on right there. Has a magnetic thing right here. So if you wanted to hold nails or something, but nobody's really ever going to use that. Um, but it's nice you can stick your belt through here if you had a, a tool belt. Or what I like, what I do is I just clip it on. It has a clip, just like a tape measure clip or something like that. So you can just clip it on your belt. Super easy to take off. So if you got to lay on the floor, get down under something and grind or hammer something. So it's really nice just to be able to easy on and off. Um, so I got that. It's been really good. The only thing I is just getting used to it is you got to make sure you put it in the thing, in the hole. Because I've missed a couple of times. I've been on the outside and thought I was going to let go. It falls and fell off a ladder, but it's not going to hurt the hammer, it's just a little annoying. So, that's some of the tools I've gotten. Um, now let's jump into some shop updates. So, I'm going to take the camera off and just show you a couple things that I did, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, everybody, so now you can see it's at the top of my workbench, that's the camera tripod right there. And as we go down, this was one of the things I recently did, was I installed this box right here. And this is just an electrical box. I used to have a power strip up there, but I decided I wanted to install an outlet just because that power strip was getting a little rusty. The um, power strips always fall off, too, because how they hold onto the workbench is that slot thing where you stick it in and you slide it over and never really holds it securely. So, when I installed this outlet, I made sure I put a switch, and if you see, this switch will turn on this outlet. So now the outlet's live, now it's not. And I always like to have this on my outlet, so if I'm working on electronics or something, that I need to plug it in, and I'll have to keep unplugging it, plugging it back in, unplugging it, plugging it back in. And also, it's just a safety feature, too, so anytime you don't have to have the outlet on all the time, so if anything happens, dust stupid thing so kind of idiot proofs it so unless that switch is turned on the outlet is not live and it's just wired up with a normal got piece of uh, Romex so it's not actually Romex it's actually an old extension cord old 15 amp um, 12 gauge extension cord that I had cut that I had a short short section of that I just ran stapled it cable stapled it to all the 2x4s ran down and into the box that's on the other side of the workbench it's down you can see that line that runs down right there that runs to an electrical box when I wired my shop that can sit on the floor for um, powers my table saw and my miter saw it's a dual gang box so and then I also just plugged in this to there with one of those um, plug deals that you wire up yourself and onto and part of an extension cord to fix an extension cord or fix a plug so that's one of the few things I did super handy think you should do it too and the next thing I did is actually right over here, zoom in a little bit, I hung all my chargers, let's see, if, I don't know if you can see that, there we go, I hung all my chargers on this wall right below 
there's my first aid kit and there's a printer right there but I hung them right here because this was a really good spot right next to the workbench that's where I keep all my tools right there and I just hung it right there next to there be next to the sorry guys so it's super easy to get um, the batteries that are charging or anything like that so I got my Milwaukee M12 charger up at the top then my DeWalt um, FlexVolt charger which is that fast charger and then just one of those cheap um, DeWalt DCB 112s which have um, slow charge time but they're just good to have so if you need to charge two batteries at once I also have that third charger that came with my new impact kit which I will throw in that bag or tough system box whichever I choose to take to school because the chargers used to be see all that wood storage and all my milk crates and stuff they used to be right there Let's see if I can get it right there my fingers all blurry but See where it says Bauer? They used to be sitting right along that shelf right there. And that was a really poor spot for them because anytime you had to charge something, you kind of had to hassle the charger around because it barely fit in there and they weren't hanging. They were just sitting there and it would fall off. and It was just not a really good place to put them. So I finally just committed and decided to hang them on the wall. Now, a really nice thing about these DeWalt chargers that the Milwaukee didn't do was when you hang them, they give you see up at the top right there it tells you let's see if I can get the light to hit right there it tells you it says four and a half inches and it tells you that exact distance between that hook and the other hook so you barely even have to measure it's just super simple I'm trying to get this back on there one handed uh -oh. so it's super simple the flexible one had it too but the Milwaukee didn't so you have to measure it in really just guess because you can never get those measurements actually right on there unless you have like a set of calipers or something so I got the Milwaukee one on there it was a little more of a hassle because it didn't have the measurements on the back so that's kind of the few things I've done around the shop um, that's basically it for this month or the last times I talked to you guys so let me go throw the camera back on the tripod and we will jump right back into the video Okay guys, so that's a wrap for this video. Hope you enjoyed the first shop talk. And if you want, if you have anything that you want me to talk about or bring up in the next video, any questions or just anything in general, leave it down in the comments and I'll see if I can talk about it next shop talk. So that's it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.